everyone and welcome back to another industry report. So, man, it is crazy how much is going on with this channel. Be sure to hit that sub button. There's like one to two videos a day. It's getting a bit wild. But today we have a pretty shocking update to a story that I actually covered yesterday on the channel. Now, that video is worth checking out. First, it does cover the full industry perspective on this topic and the practice of publishers purposefully hiding their business models for launch and how that's very dangerous for the future of our industry and for the publisher customer relationship. Now, this was sparked off, or that video was sparked off by the most recent update to Activision Blizzard's Call of Duty Black Ops 4, which added in paid for loot boxes into the game. Now this is on top of it having a battle pass like monetization system, paid for contracts, zombie mode resource monetization, a direct purchase cosmetic system, a full game base price, and a full priced season pass. The largest issue is that these things were added in post-launch in a way that made it impossible for consumers to know what they were actually getting into on launch day, with many players buying into a full premium game now finding themselves really in a game that feels like a free-to-play hellscape. The latest update to this story is of how Activision have retroactively made their developers kind of liars and how they have seemingly not been good to their teams. And it really does highlight the relationship between the AAA publisher and the developers that they own with this story actually spanning back years, giving us a look into Activision Blizzard's management of their monetization and this series. So the Black Ops 4 design director was interviewed before the launch of the game. And in that interview, he said that blackout characters would only be locked behind missions. Now, Blackout is the game's battle royale mode and the missions were essentially just gameplay challenges that you could complete to unlock those characters, of course, for free through gameplay. Now, his original interview was correct until the most recent update, the rather aptly named Grand Heist. In this new update, the new Blackout characters are tied to reserve crates, uh, basically loot boxes. And this is of course also at the same time that they've added in the ability to purchase loot boxes generally in the game. And this is a real problem. At launch, players were told that the Black Ops char or the Blackout characters would be free and unlocked through gameplay. They purchased this game knowing that. Activision Blizzard have since changed that, adding in these characters to its monetization system. Now, while this may be permissible in a free-to-play title, it simply is absurd in a fully priced game that, as I already mentioned, has just about every single free-to-play monetization scheme in the book crammed into it. Now, the resurfacing of that interview put design director David Vonderhaar what an awesome name, uh, into a rather tricky position, and it prompted him to respond on Reddit, saying that at the time of the interview, everything he said was correct, and if he went back in time, he'd say the same thing again, because it was right at the time. He talked about how things change over time, and how not all of these decisions are design decisions, and they're not really his decisions. He went on to say that it puts him in a tough position. Does he just not give interviews anymore, especially when he'll be asked about things that he has very little say over? And on the whole, Vonderhaar is right here, but it does highlight the troublesome relationship between developer and publisher, where really, developers like David Vonderhaar, they just can't really feel comfortable talking about their games anymore because there's always the risk of the publisher ordering changes to the business model. Now, the thing is, this story goes back, it goes a bit deeper, and David Vonderhaar is actually kind of still involved. Now, back in February 2016, take this with a big pinch of salt, a Reddit poster claimed to have an inside connection um, and he made a post about Activision Blizzard's loot box pa uh, plans. Now, time's, you know, passed and a lot of what he said, like, has turned out to be true. Now, basically, here's what's up. For Advanced Warfare, he claims that the team came up with the idea of supply drops as something that would keep players coming back. These were essentially loot boxes that contained cosmetics that were unlockable through gameplay with no monetization component. However, during further meetings with Activision, Activision brought up a comparison between the supply pr uh, crates and CSGO's uh, like crates. They then asked Sledgehammer Games to make it so and have the monetization model exist, and Activision Warfare supply crates existed, and they were disgusting. They actually contained weapon variants with different statistics, which, I mean, you could take that as being a pay-to-win thing, and it was a really, really bad system, at least from a player's perspective. Of course, it did make an utter boatload of money for Activision Blizzard, so for the next entry to the franchise, Black Ops 3, um, they actually did not have supply drops until late in development, and it seems that they exist from orders from Activision, or due to orders from Activision. Now, they allegedly did not want to implement them, but ultimately could not resist Activision's orders. 
And this is what's kind of shocking. According to this post, the team negotiated there only being cosmetic items in the supply drops, unlike with Advanced Warfare. Activision agreed, but with a condition that their system had to match the month one revenue of Advanced Warfare's system, which of course included the weapon variants with differing statistics. The team supposedly then added knife skins over two weeks, with the Reddit poster saying that they kind of wanted knife unboxing videos that YouTubers like, say, Ali A would do. Um, it's just really, it's quite similar to what a lot of CSGO YouTubers would do. Now, upon launch, these supposedly did not sell well at all in comparison to Advanced Warfare, with the Reddit poster claiming that they brought in at least 5x less money than Advanced Warfare supply drops did. This then led to gameplay affecting items being added to Black Ops 4 supply crates. And and while we cannot confirm the veracity of the claims of this post, they do line up with what actually happened, where Black Ops 3 initially had cosmetic-only supply drops, and then, of course, had gameplay impacting things added to the supply drops. Now, I don't want to speculate too much here, but we know that Vonderhaar did leave social media after the release of Black Ops 3. That seems kind of... I mean, you know, it seems odd given how he seems to be quite a fan of um, just interacting with his community. And uh, there was even rumor rumors that he was considering a career move. Now that is all of course speculation. I don't want to put words in, the ma uh, words in the man's mouth or anything like that. But I guess it's an interesting coincidence that, I mean, you can't help but notice, right? Now overall, it does just show us how little control the game development teams of AAA publisher owned studios have over the business models of their titles. Hopefully this is the worst example, but if you look at say Anthem, I mean, it's pretty clear that, look, that game just to me does not seem like what Bioware set out to make years ago. It seems rather cynically constructed in a few areas to say the least. And as for Black Ops 4, I mean, it is wild how heavy handed the monetization of that game is. It is one of the worst examples our industry has produced thus far. Now, of course, this trend of, you know, the relationship between the developer and the publisher, this is nothing new, but this is an important example. The financial requirements of the AAA uh, publishers do seem to really burn out their developers, forcing passionate people to have to do things that they otherwise don't want to do. Things that are counter to the love of game design that will have got them into the industry in the first place. As for this example, well, it seems to be partially dictated by Activision Blizzard's financial situation. Being real, all of their eggs are in one basket. Blizzard Entertainment is stagnating. Destiny 2? Well, it has performed poorly to the point where they, uh, you know, even after dictating the microtransactions being added, uh, decided to part ways with Bungie. Black Ops 4 is like the only thing Activision really has going for it. They know they're in for a tough year. Their earnings call says as much. And that means they need to squeeze everything in their, in their power, just all the money they can possibly get out of this game and out of its player base. They kind of need to. And it's pretty horrible to see this game slowly buckle under the increasing weight of the microtransactions dictated by a publisher who needs to get as much as they can out of it because they put all their eggs in one basket and then had problems with their business. And you know what? This probably would not need to happen if they had a healthy, diversified portfolio of titles but that is something that Bobby Kotick's business plan for very highly profitable and efficient annualizable franchises just does not seem to have allowed for. It seems to have been a short-sighted ideal. And it's a horrible glimpse into the future, really. I mean, the only way for consumers to prevent this is to blindly reject the next Call of Duty game, knowing that they cannot trust anything the developer or the publisher says leading up to launch. What's going to happen? Well. I mean, it's Call of Duty. It has a very broad player base, including a lot of players who do not pay that much attention to um, gaming news. So I don't have that much hope. Now, it is true that EA Games' Battlefront 2 is also a game that was designed to have extremely broad appeal, really appealing to people who are not, you know, not reading gaming websites or watching gaming YouTubers every day. You know, it's, it's, I guess would be more, it would have more of an overlap with like the FIFA audience. So people who are not super tuned into the industry news, but just enjoy playing games. And of course that's a totally fine way to play and enjoy games. But of course there was a big backlash to its loot boxes and that system. And I suppose that was a pretty broad game. So maybe it could be that the average Call of Duty player will just have had enough with Black Ops 4. The amount of, I mean, it's what, quintuple sextuple dipping in business models? You know, full box price, season pass, paid for contracts, 
we've got the loot boxes, of course. We've got the battle pass-like thing. We have the direct purchases. We have the way that some of the resources from zombies are also involved in the microtransaction system. I mean, it's absurd. And it's got to be absurd to the point where, you know, the average, say, FIFA Ultimate Team player is even going to look at it and think, hang on, what the hell's going on here? At least that's what I hope, and I hope consumers reject this, because if this works really well, we're going to see it impact the design of future games. Just like how Call of Duty Advanced Warfare made a lot of money because it put weapons with different statistics, variants of weapons, in its loot boxes. Because that did well, Black Ops 3 then had that be dictated that, it, that it's a thing. And that seemingly is just leading to a degradation in the quality of our games because of these monetization practices. And it, it's worrying for core games. I mean, thankfully, indies are there, and hopefully the AAA sort of decline, I, I actually hope that happens a little bit. I mean, obviously, if, that was, if that's going to come with job loss and stuff like that, and that's awful, but I hope these bad business practices are punished by consumers and that they move towards companies who are going to treat them a bit better, like CD Projekt Red, who of course just released a really good game with Witcher 3. And then they thought, you know what, let's make some more Witcher 3, a whole bunch more of it, and release an expansion pack and give people the expansion, a totally reasonable business model. Or like what Obsidian are probably going to do with their upcoming game, where it, it's just going back to basics, going back to Ideally, a project with a decently managed budget that just, you know, it comes in on budget, it makes more money than it brought in, and everyone's happy. That's really what would be lovely. But there you go. That's my thoughts on this. My worries about the relationship between developer and publisher, between developer and consumer and publisher and consumer. Let me know what you think about this. If you're a Black Ops 4 player, uh, a Call of Duty player, please let me know as well, because uh, this obviously impacts you guys the most. Thank you very much for watching this video. Be sure to check out the rest of the stuff on the channel. We've had four videos in two days, which has been mad. But uh, yeah, guys, cheers. I'll see you next time.